competition. Why does Sean go and pick up a rhythm brewing can as opposed to Budweiser that's been around for a million years? I know that name. I know the right. brand. I, you know, I trust them. Let me, you know, why, why do I, what, what separates you or is it not what's in the can that separates you, but the story behind the can, which is yourself that separates you? Sean, when you, and I love this question, when you sip on our, our rhythm beer, and I will tell you what's in the can is damn sure just as good as the story. I, I will tell you because when you come out with a product, it's it's got to be good. And you all have to offer your customers the best of the best, well, especially in the brewing industry when, you, when you're brewing. But when they're sipping on it, think of the story. Think of, of when, when you sip and you consume, you are sipping on history. You're sipping on not only history, you're sipping on the future of your children's children and economic advancement, employment opportunities, generational wealth. So it's a conscious effort. That's, that's why people are connecting with the brand. They're connecting with the story. They're connecting with what's inside of it, because you're right. You know, Budweiser is a household name, but Rhythm, again, having a national getting the, the, an opportunity for that national exposure, Sean, that's what we're talking about. It's bigger. It, it goes into economics of it. So you can be sipping on it all day. Like, again, it's delicious, but think there is a story, but there is economic power behind what you're sipping on. Absolutely. Let's stick to economics for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the costs um, behind the scenes? You, you know, what's the profit margins look like on a keg or, or a can? Is this a, I know you said that this is a multi-billion, hundreds of billion dollar business. Woo, yes. But individually, as, as a startup, are the margins great? Are you making pennies on the dollar? Or are you making, you know, 50 cent on the dollar? What does that look like? I it, 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 love this question because when you dive into the economics, this is this is how this this happens. And there's a disconnect with distribution. And I'm going to tell you how this works, how it can work against uh, people of color who are in in the beverage industry that might not have the coin to go out and you know do acquisitions. When you have when you when you are not in the position to have your the more beer you make. The more quantity you make, the more mar your margins will go up. So let's let's let me tell you about that with the beer industry. The more if I'm going from a 30 barrel system to a 60 to a 90 to a 100 barrel system, at the 100 barrel system, I'm making a lot. More, I'm, I'm I'm brewing a lot more beer. Margins will go up. Mm -hmm. The less you make in the barrels, then your margins are are, are thin. Okay. The distribution company and the contract, whoever you're contracting with right now is making the money. Correct. Okay. So in the economic, we don't have the opportunity. We, don't, we, we want the opportunity to get out there to the masses so that we can double and triple and quadruple our production. So that if it's in Connecticut, and we're because we're only sold in Connecticut right now. But if it's in New York, if it goes to Atlanta, then that's when the margins go up. But if you're getting into this to think you're gonna, you know, make money immediately, this is not. This is this is grind, grit, and hustle, and it's about producing and production. So that's how, at least, that's how it is in economics in the beer industry. So, you know, the more we make, the more the margins Margin. are going to. The markup is good. So kegs, we have logs, we have our, you know, taps, our, our beers on tap, but it's in the stores like Trader Joe's, ShopRite, Big Y, Whole Foods. So we're placed in these, these stores, but it's really getting the product out there and opening up distribution opportunities. How, how, how many batches um, are you making? And I, and I hope I'm 
using the correct terminology. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John, no, you're doing. Listen, you're doing a good job, and, and you know what? I'm, I have to invite you on my next brew day. You got to come out and jump on a brew day with me. It is fascinating. Yeah, it is yeah. absolutely I'm fascinating. Eating. I get the invite. I'm there. Um, yes. How, how many batches are you making monthly or even annually? We're doing about thirty barrels. Let me. I'll break this down to simplify it. We're doing right. thirty barrels of our red and our blue monthly. Each 30 barrel usually yields about 420 plus cases. So that's about 900 cases of beer that can go to distro. Uh, because we were in a pandemic, we weren't really doing logs because the restaurants weren't open, but let's just stick with the cases. Yep. 30, so maybe 60 barrels uh, a month uh, brewing beer. That is where we are right now, which will yield those 800 plus cases to, to get out into the stores. So that's what we're, 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 but again, we're gearing up for the, the 90 barrels. Again, the more accounts we, we get, the more barrels that we, you know, that we have to produce. Got you. Let's stick with COVID for a second. Mm -hmm. But some people, COVID literally put them out of business. For others, COVID in some strange way, and I hate to yeah. say it this way, but it was a godsend. Their business was birthed during- a Blessing. It was a blessing for them. In the brewing industry, how did it affect you? Uh, did you see more sales online? Is there a such thing as online sales when it comes to beer? Did, did you guys take a hit? Were you able to weather the storm? Obviously you did. Um, or did you see yeah. during those th th during the last year and a half? Sean, I will I will tell you, the pandemic was a blessing to our brewing business. How so? We, we were able to. People were home. They were sitting down. They had a chance to go on social media wherever you were on social media and read things that had happened in the, the past two years that they people didn't know anything about. So we had customers, we had people, our, our social media engagement quadrupled in a month. So we were, so people were getting ready to read about, they were reading about the first African-American female owned brewer in the state of Connecticut. Where in the hell did that come from? Oh my gosh. Just read about you, but if people were not in quarantine, they might not have known about rhythm. So, yeah. right, it would have been, you know, they would have been buying the, and, and consuming the same old, same old. And then we were blessed with a lot of, again, you know, the Associated Press picked up the story um, early on. Martha Stewart has picked up the story, you know, Thrillist. We've gotten just a lot of press and attention because people we are like, Black people brew beer and they drink beer. They're like, Billy D. Williams was like the last person, literally, that wrapped up. <laughs> you right about man. that. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It, when yeah. I black folks, I think of brown the liquor. Like, it's that, that's what we drink. Uh, yeah. I don't the 40 ounce do craze. Excuse me? The 40 ounce craze. It was oh, a 40 that, ounce. Yep, you're right. Yep, the 40 ounce craze. You're absolutely right. It was the 40 ounces and Billy D. Williams. That's the last connection. Brand ambassador, put it this way, Sean. That's the last brand ambassador that we had, I believe, for a beer for, for, for beer. And so, but now we were going, oh, okay. We got some, you know, we it's not malt, malt liquor. We got we got some, you know, high quality products that are owned by and made by a, a black fee, a, a black woman. And so those are, that was the blessing of the pandemic. I was able, I, Clubhouse, being on, on social media, those platforms and getting in front of people in the music industry and in the entertainment industry that, that read about a black beer company. Let's make no mistakes about it. There is vodka, there is wine, there's tequila, there's bourbon, there's whiskey, there is gin. There we have brand ambassadors for all of those beverages that I just named. 
the beer right now is wide open. And that's why I am on a mission. Okay. So, go, yes. go ahead. I'm sorry. Social media. So the pandemic, in one sense, when my dance studio shut down for a year and a half, God bless me. And I was able to focus 100% on the beer. And I was ready for that social media explosion that we received and was able to sit on Clubhouse for four hours and really get the brand out there and get the name out there. So yes, it was a, it was a, a extreme blessing for us. And I'm, I'm, you know, it was just a blessing in the pandemic. Gotcha. And we got through it we, because it was essential. Liquor was essential immediately. They didn't shut down the liquor store. So we knew we had to mo- keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.